Greetings! I am Herbert Erpaderp, and today I'm building this 135th scale Hetzop by Academy. As you can see, there are a lot of parts in this box, much different from any wargaming kit. I like that all the different sprues are separately bagged. The instructions are quite comprehensive and easy to follow. Quite good! They also included some decals and this yellow sheet. You can't see it on the camera very well, but it's a mask for painting the camo. I think that's pretty awesome, though I probably won't use it myself. I'm not going to show the entire build. Clipping out all the parts, test fitting and gluing them on would be kind of boring, annoying to edit and would result in a very long video. This build did take quite some time, a few hours over the course of about a week. So I'm just going to show each stage as I built it. If you have any questions or tips, I'd love to see them in the comments. The first step was to put on all the suspension gear, road wheels, drive sprockets and idler wheels. There were a lot of parts, so it was a time consuming step. Be careful with the road wheels next to the drive sprocket and idler wheel. They overlap and will be difficult if you glue one on before the other. Do them at the same time. The next step was to add tracks. They're a little bit tricky, but not too hard to put on. These are much better than the rubber tracks you get in some kits in this scale. The way I like to do it is to glue the individual track links together, and before the glue sets properly, glue them onto the tank. It's easy, just handle them carefully so they don't come apart. This step also included adding the rear mudguard parts and angle parts that form part of the upper hull. Next, the rear of the hull is attached. Pretty simple. There was a string included to use as a cable on this part, but I didn't like it so I left it off. Then I add some of the details to the upper hull. I really like this etched metal grill. While adding some more details to the upper hull, I found this periscope was kind of difficult to keep in position, so I used some green stuff on it. Even more of the upper hull details have now been added, and it has been glued to the lower hull. No major issues with anything here. And even more hull details. The jack was a little bit annoying to build and install, but it should look good painted. The vision device covers were a bit fiddly too, and I nearly lost some of them. Speaking of fiddly, the next step was adding these brackets for the side skirts. Do this carefully. I then glued on the side skirts, which was quite easy because the brackets were placed neatly. I also added the gun. You can have this so it moves, but I glued mine solidly in place. As you can see, I finished the model by adding the machine gun to the roof and some grab handles on the rear slope. Overall, I really liked this model. It was very fun to build and was relatively quick, though it still did take quite a while. I didn't need to clean up the parts too much, mostly I just had to clean where I clipped the pieces from the sprue. I really like the level of detail in these bigger kits. I've not built one for a while, so it's a nice change from the smaller scales like Flames of War models. I think this is going to be fun to paint, though it will probably take quite some time. A positive is all the leftover pieces for my bits box, and two unused crew members. Yay, bits! I decided to make a base for this model, nothing too complicated, just this plaque thing that I got from the craft section at the local hardware store. I glued on some of this stone patterned plastic sheet, then I trim it to fit the base, and we have a nice simple base. The camera isn't picking up the detail very well, but it should look very good when it's painted. Thanks for watching. I hope this was interesting or helpful. Subscribe and stay tuned for more. Farewell.